Hi everyone. So we hope you've really enjoyed our videos on uh, healthy vegan cooking. Yes. We definitely really enjoyed, good uh, fun. <laughs> enjoyed eating them. So um, Palmer, would you mind sharing with us what, what made you decide to do this 30 day challenge? Because it's, it's quite a challenge. It is a challenge and, and actually it's linked to the marathon as well mm -hmm. in that, you know, sometimes you do need a focus or you need a challenge to just remind yourself how strong you are. Mm -hmm. And because obviously my husband being a, cyc a cyclist, the statistic, um, we have been through this trauma for a very long time and a trauma can bring out all different emotions of being mm. overwhelmed, anxiety and stress. Um, and you know, that's where I've been really, although I'm very good at finding strategies to overcome that, yeah. that's how I'm living, I'm sort of surviving and fighting it. So this whole detox was because I ended up getting um, cystitis all the time, thrush all the time. I've got this uh, autoimmune, uh, which is lichen cellulosis. So all these things that really come from stress. And even yeah. bowel syndrome is stress. Yeah. Um, so I kind of thought, right, I'm just going to cleanse myself because rather than just exercising, um, you've got to invest internally as well yeah. and look at what's irritating you so that your system is functioning really well to make you physically and mentally strong and just to have that energy yeah you know? so that's why I did it yeah and would you because obviously there's a lot of sort of self-control involved yeah. in you know being vegan caffeine free yeah. alcohol, alcohol free, free. Did, did you like that sense of control did that sort of add to yeah the and benefits, I, it, it's a healthy control because um, when I was younger um, probably the last time I felt quite stressed um, was when I was in my 20s and mm. I you know completely overwhelmed uh, first boyfriend, uh, left my convent school, strict Sicilian background, <laughs> loved my parents, but they were really strict. Um, I had those sort of same feelings, but I didn't have the strategies. So I was completely overwhelmed, completely anxious about everything. Mm. And it turned itself into anorexia and bulimia. Right. And I kind of vowed after that, because it took me years to get out of this kind of cycle, um, that I would invest in looking after myself and I'd really find a way that would work for me. But it does take control. And funny enough, you using those words is interesting because bulimia and anorexia is control. Yes. So it's the yeah. opposite now. I'm doing it control in a positive way rather than a negative yeah. way. Yeah, and that's really important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I also think it's really important for us to be open and talk yes. about these things because unfortunately um, subjects like bulimia, anorexia, yeah. um, mental health issues can be quite taboo they and are. they shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, but people should be open. Um, yeah. So, you know, I've had my own challenges in my life. Um, my younger brother David, um, severely autistic, learning difficulties. That really impacted on our family. Yeah. Um, How did that affect you growing up? Well, I didn't have, in many ways, I had a, a normal childhood, a great childhood. My parents were fantastic at providing for me and making sure that I was happy and I had a lot of friends. But on the other hand, it was a very abnormal childhood at the same time. Yeah. Um, you know, events like Christmas um, were very different for us, quite stressful. Yeah. Um, because one of the things my brother loves is a routine, a strict routine. It's very important to him, hmm. um, and and Christmas is so different. Yeah, you know, it's, it's very different. Op just opening the presents were a huge source of anxiety for him. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was it was an interesting childhood. But as you said earlier, turning something negative into positive is is what I chose to do as well. Yeah. Um, because I feel like having a disabled brother has actually been a positive experience. Mm. It helped me grow up, it helped me mature, become more understanding of people. And then you've got that empathy of understanding empathy. what's happening. And yeah. empathy is so important. Yeah. Um, and he's such a lovely, he's such a lovely man. He is, he's a joy to be around. And, and I wonder if it's the same sort of, you know, feeling on, for me, I remember because I, kind of left my convent school <clears throat> and went to work at Vidal Sassoon and uh, it was fashion and it was how beautiful you are and how slim you are <laughs> and but yeah. at the same time for you it must have had the same effect with well, how do people view you having a, a brother that is disabled yeah. and it's all those uh, you know negative things that you have to deal with with puberty yeah, as well. Yeah because I remember I think I was probably around 13, 14 I remember I, I did hit a stage when I was a young teenager of being quite self-conscious when I was out yeah. with David you know which yeah. I'm ashamed to say you know that's how I felt but I think it's natural it you is. know you're very that's a very self-conscious age anyway yeah. and so I could see sometimes people looking at David and, and thinking you know what, what's wrong yeah. with him and that would make me feel really self-conscious but as I grew up yeah. you know I learned to realise 
you know, who cares? It's their, it's their who cares problem. What it's people actually, think. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's what our today is about. This video is about embracing your unique quirky qualities and <laughs> making the most of who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, no one's perfect, no one's beautiful, beautiful, but we can enhance ourselves naturally. Um, you know, people always say, have you had anything done to your skin or your face? And the only thing I have done is I used to have this bump here, very kind of, um, oh, what's her name? I've got their name now. <laughs> I can't remember the lady's name. Barbara, Barbara Streisand, oh, kind yeah. of like a hook nose. And I was always very, I was called um, Concord um, all my life. At, really? Yeah, primary school. Because uh, <laughs> I have a long nose, very Italian, very Sicilian. And um, they used to tease me and call me Concord. And, uh, and, and now I think, who cares? But I did, later on in life actually, much later, when I was about 29, um, I just had this bump removed here, and that's the only thing I've done, but that was something for me. Um, and actually, it was when I was able to deal with it and have the confidence to say, if anyone asked me if you've had it, I was go, yeah, just had rhinoplasty to get rid of that, because they didn't make my nose any shorter. Um, but it was just something that I was really kind of conscious and I got bullied for. And I just think, do you know what? Embrace who you are, but you don't have to do Botox and things like that, because we don't know what's in it. So I think, just make the most of it and don't keep looking at everybody else mm. and comparing yourself because everyone is individually beautiful and beauty is inside, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Personality is inside. Yeah. And it's funny you've just shared that because I, <laughs> that's exactly the same thing that I had done to my nose. Um, but I, I was never bullied about my nose. Um, no one ever made any comments. I just had this little bump in my nose. But it was something that bothered me. And so, you know, when I got to, I think I, think I was 20 when yeah. I had it done. And you know, I had the money to do it, I'd earned my own money, and I thought, why not? I'm gonna yeah. do it for me. I didn't do it for anyone else. No. So that's the only thing I've had done as well. How funny it's, is that? that? We're, we're so similar, Paul. We are kindred spirits. <laughs> so it is interesting, and I think, you know, mental health, you know, anorexia and bulimia is mental health, and I have no shame about that. Um, you know, I have got quite, you know, a mad kind of side to me. Um, and I've done things that I probably shouldn't, but actually we are human beings trying to struggle through this existence, trying to find out what our purpose is. Um, and this is why we do our YouTube, yeah. because it's very hard to find what your purpose is. Yeah, yeah, and we want to reach out and connect with other people as yeah. well. So. so don't struggle silently, share your thoughts and, and be honest, because life is difficult. And for me, with this biggest trauma that I've gone through recently, um, which, you know, I do want to explore later on about cyclists on the road. Um, it's not anyone's fault. It's just paying attention to what you're doing when you're driving. And, and it's not just that person on that, cycle, on that bike or not that person on the motorbike or not that person crossing the road. It's the ripple effect that yeah. affects everyone in the family, all your friends, all your colleagues coming round to support you. And to me, if we can help um, people to have an awareness and not to be selfish on the roads, to share the roads. That would be amazing. <laughs> so we hope you've enjoyed our little video. We'll be um, talking more about yeah, mental health issues absolutely. over the coming weeks. So please uh, don't forget to subscribe yes. and let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you.